in your hospitals and you need to admit these kids, um, what care areas are they allowed to go to um, outside of the ICU, obviously? Are, are, you, are you allowing them to be admitted to pediatrics floors or step-down units or, and Rebecca? In our hospital, they have to go to the intermediate care unit only because that's the only place where we currently have monitors. And so we feel like if the patient needs to be on a monitor that somebody's actually watching, then they need to be in our IMCU. We are a community hospital, so we don't have pediatric intensivists, we have pediatric hospitalists. But if we want somebody to be able to actually watch the monitor, then they're in our intermediate care unit. Great, Adam. So uh, obviously we don't keep pediatrics at my site, so they would all be transferred out. For the adult population, they just need a monitored bed. So if they're, uh, like Rebecca was saying, if they're sick enough to need the units, then they're on a monitored bed, but then it's just clinically, they can either be uh, just a regular tele bed, a step down or ICU. Most of the time they all need ICU though. Great, John? Uh, so our hospital has set parameters of who's allowed to go where. So essentially at our peripheral site, if you're on a, a liter per kilogram, uh, and your FiO2 is less than 50, you may be able to stay there. Um, if uh, you're at our main children's site, there actually is no flow parameters. Uh, you could be at max, uh, maxed out at uh, two liters per kilogram, uh, but the FiO2 is the cutoff point between going to the ACU and going to the floor. Our PICU doctors feel that if you're uh, sustaining yourself in an FiO2 greater than 50% and it's been more than an hour and a half or two hours, uh, regardless of flow, uh, you just have to be watched a little bit more closely. Uh, I may need a little bit more aggressive RT care than what the floor can handle. Great. 